Well, a very good morning from Heathrow Terminal 3 and a real treat coming up today, well, for me anyway, and for you as well, hopefully. So, we're flying with Iberia down to Madrid tonight. The time now is 10 past 11 in the morning and the flight goes at quarter to seven in the evening. So I've got a good seven and a half, eight hours here at Terminal 3 and you might think, What's this madman doing eight hours at an airport before a flight? Even for an av geek, that's a stretch. If, like me, you've got Amex Platinum, Priority Pass, which comes with the Platinum card, as well as One World status, then here at Terminal 3, all the stars just align to create lounge harmony. By my reckoning, in this terminal behind me, Terminal 3 at Heathrow, I have access to at least 13 lounges, and I'm sure I've missed some there. So we're going to try the One World lounges, with my gold card with BA. That'll be Cathay Pacific, British Airways, Qantas, maybe not the American Airlines lounge, that's not so good. We might try a Priority Pass lounge, although the Priority Pass lounges are quite difficult to get into with Priority Pass these days. And to be honest, here at Terminal 3, like everywhere, they're independent lounges. They're not, in my view, as good as the airline lounges. And finally tonight, we'll try the Amex Centurion lounge, which is exclusively at the London airports here at Terminal 3 Heathrow. Now I've been like a great many of you, to the Amex Centurion lounges in the US. Last time I was here, I drank a fair few morning cocktails. So what Amex have done since the last time I was here to ease some of that congestion is to introduce a three hour limit. So you can't go into the Amex lounge here until three hours before your flight. But that's fine, like I say, because heck, we've got plenty of other lounges to try here. So first of all, gonna head up, gonna get some Neurofen, obviously. Gonna head up then through priority security because I'm traveling with my uh, one world carrier Iberia with my gold status. You'd also get priority security if you had a business class ticket as well with Iberia, which coincidentally I have as well. And if that's not enough on this very exciting, very happy travel day, tonight I'm also trying the daily wide body rotation down to Madrid with Iberia on their Airbus A330. So it'll be a full flatbed in business class. If you remember, I tried to do this before last year from Madrid back up here to Heathrow with Iberia. But what they did instead is at the last minute, which you'll remember I wasn't very happy about. I was expecting a flatbed. What I actually got was a level Airbus A330, which has been lurking around Heathrow for a while now. Pleased to tell you, as of, well, it's now February 2023, pleased to tell you that Iberia, or level low-cost Airbus 330, has now gone. It's no longer making an appearance here. I'll explain more in the Iberia video, which I'll do next after this. Let's go and discover all of the lounge luxury here at T3 and I think we're going to start let's start with the first class lounge at British Airways and see what that's like British Airways lounges here at T3 at the time of filming are split into two, one for first class and or One World Emerald members, and the other side is for business class and or One World Sapphire members. Today I'm choosing the first lounge as it's still way to service and it always feels very spacious to me. For lunch today I choose a curry and that's washed down with a variety of alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks. Whilst this isn't the best of the T3 One World lounges, it's a fine place to grab a bite to eat. And if it's the only lounge you visit, you'd leave feeling pleased, having not struggled to find a seat, as is so often the case at the first lounge in Terminal 5. Next up is a visit to the Qantas London Lounge. I'll be honest, I've never been a fan of this lounge. To me, it just lacks something that I can't quite put my finger on. However, having said that, they do serve some nice cocktails upstairs, which is the best place to plonk yourself if you want to try a few. I can highly recommend the Bramble cocktail here, and the more I drank of these, the more I'd recommend it. After three, they become even more addictive. Don't come here to this lounge for the views though, or you'll leave more disappointed than booking an Iberia Airbus A330 than being fobbed off with a level aircraft. Not that I'm bitter. Hello everybody, I thought I'd bring you up to date on the lounge tour so far. So, quick update then, the time is half past one in the afternoon, so I've been at 
Heathrow Terminal 3 now for a couple of hours or so. Started off in the British Airways lounge in the first section, as you saw, and had a really nice curry to get things going to start the day. Had a few cocktails since then, and I'm now in the Qantas London lounge, which is also included, obviously, as part of the One World deal. So if you've got One World status, silver or gold, you can come in here and uh, try out the Bramble cocktail, which I have to say is really good. Now, I'm not a fan of squid, and squid is the dish of the day here at the Qantas Lounge today. So what I'm going to do is just finish off a couple more of these. Plenty of time yet, another six hours before we take off with Iberia on the glorious A330 wide body. So I'm going to have a few more drinks here. Then what I'm probably going to do is head over to the Cafe Pacific Lounge, which is immediately next door to here. But because there's a section divider, we have to go downstairs, we have to go out the door, we have to go to the right, we have to get in the lift, go up to the second floor to get into the cafe lounge probably going to have a shower there because i'm told the showers are the best showers of all the lounges in t3 at the cafe lounge i'll spare you that on the video you'll be pleased to hear and then from there we're going to have some fine a la carte dining waiter service in the cafe lounge clearly reputed to be one of the best dining experiences here at t3 as always i'd like to thank my very generous patreon supporters and this month a warm welcome to new member danny egan Danny joins fellow supporters such as Joshua Bedell, Kieran Davis, James Wake and Joe Ainley in helping me bring these videos to you month in, month out. Danny, thanks for your support and welcome. And I have to agree, having tried it before, but I'm going to bring it to you on video today as well because we've got plenty of time, plenty of time. And as I said earlier, still not sure yet if I'm going to try out the American Airlines Lounge. I've tried it before, it's not great to be honest, it's been refurbished. And it's still not great, unfortunately. Um, so what I'll probably do is spend a few hours in the cafe lounge, have the shower, have the a la carte dining, do a bit of plane spotting. And then in the evening, as we head towards the Iberia flight, we'll probably, as the sun sets, just head on over to the American Express Centurion Lounge. And we won't be able to see the sunset because actually it doesn't have any windows. But it does have good cocktails. And it's a nice place to hang out. And the reason I've left it so far late in the day with the Amex lounge is because unfortunately, as I said earlier, they've now imposed a three hour limit. So you can't go in the lounge until three hours before your flight. The last time I did it with a couple of really great friends of mine and supporters of the channel, Jamie and Neil, when we did the Finnair trip up to Helsinki, um, they, you, you could spend all day in there when they first opened it. The lounge hadn't been open that long at that point. So stick with me. Let's have some more cocktails and let's head on over to the cafe lounge on the first section using my One World Gold status. Anyway, with that, let's go visit the Jewel in the Crown, the Cathay Pacific T3 Lounge. Arguably the best of the One World lounges here, it's the lounge for those in the know. This is how lounges should be, but rarely are. Speaking of which, my first port of call after testing out the great showers in the cafe lounge is to the restaurant style eatery. Menus and table service are the order of the day here and I choose dim sum to start, followed by a steak and ale pie with cheese board for dessert, washed down with Johnny Walker Black. A visit to this lounge will make you happier than booking an Iberia Airbus A330 and finding at the gate that it is actually an Iberia Airbus A330 with flatbeds and a delicious fish dinner. Later in my visit, I settle down to a nice whiskey, some scampi, and those great floor to ceiling views. And finally, because of the three hour limit, I visit the Centurion Lounge by American Express last. This lounge is modern, offers great cocktails, although it does get busy at times. 
Food selection is limited by the space that Amex has here, but the quality of catering is right up there. Despite having no windows, if this is the only lounge option you have at Terminal 3, you'll be pleased you stopped by. Hello everybody, so quick update for you now. Um, just in the American Express Centurion Lounge at Terminal 3. So you saw, first of all, we went to the BA Lounge and had an initial snack. And then we went to the Qantas Lounge and had some nice uh, cocktails, the Bramble cocktails. And I had a few of those, they were very good. But uh, then I decided to have a quick shower and a delicious three course meal. And there's no better place to do that if you've got one world status than here in Terminal 3 at the Cafe Pacific first lounge. So I had a shower as you saw, I sped too much gory detail. You really don't want to see that. The culmination is here at the Amex lounge where I've enjoyed some morning cocktails. I'm just about to have my third one in fact. Before I get on tonight's flight down to Madrid with Iberia on the glorious Airbus A330 and I'll show you that coming up shortly. I do like the Amex lounge, the one thing it misses is windows. Um, the Amex Centurion Lounge here at Terminal 3 was quite a late entry to the lounge collection here at Heathrow. So it's kind of had to make do with whatever space it could get. That said, it's very nice. In particular, as I say, is the cocktails. The food's not bad, as you saw. And overall, it's fairly quiet as well. That's the thing, because the lounges can get very busy. Uh, so the time now is 4.45 p.m. in the afternoon. So uh, my flight leaves here down to Madrid in about two hours. So what I'm going to do is have a couple more drinks here, a couple more probably breakfast martinis, and then um, head down to the boarding gates. Uh, the aircraft tonight is a 10 year old Airbus 330 of the Spanish airline Iberia. And very much looking forward to that flight. I believe that dinner service this evening is hake, fish. What was it we had for dinner tonight? Well, we had a choice, steak, fish. Yes, yes, I remember I had lasagna. So, not quite as good as the beef dish they normally prepare. I've had both, I've had hake and I've had the beef. The beef is excellent, the hake is good. But we'll see, we'll see how we do. We've got a good seat tonight, 2A. So on the left-hand side of the wide body. And everything looks to be on time at the moment. So we'll see. 